My name is Jeff Dwyer. I have the privilege of being the director of Michigan State University Extension. My first question is, MSU researchers have found a way to decontaminate N95 masks using commercial ovens. How did the researchers come up with this method to remove harmful substances from repeated use of masks? About 10 days ago, I became aware of a bit of research out of Stanford and a couple of other places that had looked into using heat as a method for decontaminating masks, and we immediately got together with some of our colleagues at Sparrow Hospital, who've been working closely with us, and over the last 10 days, uh, my team at MSU Extension, together with our colleagues from Sparrow Hospital, have developed a protocol that we're in the final testing phases to do just that. My second question is, how many weeks have um, MSC researchers been doing the decontamination process, and is there a limit to how many decontaminated masks can be used in a, a commercial oven or even certain types of masks? We're focusing on N95 masks because that's the critical need in healthcare, and there are three predominant different styles of N95 masks, so we're focusing on those. And we've only been doing this in the last few days. We've been doing a variety of test runs so we can test our protocols and do testing on the masks. So this is all very recent. And we don't know how many times a mask can go through the heat treatment decontamination process. But based on our experience thus far and other research, we think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 times. As far as I mentioned, is this being done for both healthcare workers as well as patients that have COVID-19? Well, patients don't typically wear N95 masks. There might be occasions when they would do that. This is predominantly, N95 masks are predominantly worn by healthcare providers. Extremely important that we uh, maintain the health of healthcare providers in part because there aren't enough of them right now to deal with this crisis. My fourth question is, being a major university and having the resources for removing harmful substances from the mags from repeated use, I heard uh, another uh, one of your colleagues, Norman Beauchamp, said he would not recommend uh, this method for people at home. And like for people that are out going to grocery shopping, what would you possibly recommend for them cleaning their mags? I think we're talking about very different kinds of masks. So the governor, for example, has now called for all Michiganders to wear cloth masks when they leave the home as a helpful mechanism in controlling the spread of uh, novel coronavirus. And so, you know, I think we should follow that guidance. Those cloth masks, I presume people will, you know, wash them occasionally or do whatever is uh, necessary from that point of view. And my final question is, is there anything you would personally like to say in regards to all the health workers, first responders that are out there doing the best they can during this unnatural crisis? We're grateful for everything that our healthcare partners and medical care providers are doing everything the first responders and police and fire and everyone is doing in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic. And I would want them to know, too, that as I'm sure they do know, but that uh, all of us from all walks of life are trying to think about what we can do to support them in a variety of ways. And this is one of those that we think uh, we're able to do effectively through this partnership with Michigan State University Extension and Sparrow Hospital.